other because of the impact they produced when one held the other back for as long as they'd known each other. We use the measurements of impact to justify ignoring or even actively killing homeless individuals because they have no means to produce, which is the only thing we use to value people in this world. More advanced nations meddling in the affairs of smaller ones for their own gain, reasoning that it is the just thing to do from our perspective, so we must do it. It is responsibility, not war. Our ethics don't communicate, so we force ours in. Eventually, it'll become the law, and that's fine enough. And if the gap is large enough, we reason even further that we do this because those lower civilizations simply can't comprehend what proper ethics are. They don't even know about freedom until we show them the definition of it on the bottom of a boot. Even with what we call our advanced societies, are we actually allowed comfort because it's right? Or because just enough comfort and just enough care keeps us alive and profitable for longer? Are the benefits just byproducts of collecting from us? As their time and age is up or considered to be in multiple places, we see that we are not allowed rest because of some well-deserved break, or because that's the age where we stop being useful to them after years of abuse. Like the magical girls, we are expended of our energy and then tossed aside. But it's not from aliens above. It's from people who, just like you and just like me, were born of human beings, they now crush them onto their boot and ask for a thank you just for the chance to have it happen. And the life- to, be honest, to be honest, to be honest, Professor Viral, I wanted to respond to this video. I wrote it into his comments. He's really spitting some facts here. <laughs> It, it's just round and round it goes. It's, it's really completely the Ouroboros that we find ourselves in today, where we've hit we hit a I can't say a plateau. We hit a plateau where production doesn't equal I can say doesn't equal our output, our energy output. Even though one per, one person can actually produce more um, per the amount of energy than they could, you know, 50 something, 60 years ago when we were back at steam engines. Or, you know, you want to go back far enough when we were using sticks and levers. <laughs> it's just gotten to the point where um, I really think what really the breakdown comes in is not only what, what we value our time, what we value our time energy in. And really, if you, you're valuing your time and energy in what's a fiat currency. <laughs> Which literally means because I said so. It's called fiat. Uh, it's a Latin term for because I said so. It's literally imaginary. Then uh, yes, it's going to fluctuate because there's really nothing back in it. There's only things back in it is the threat of violence. <laughs> and yes, we have to go as Americans. As Americans, we have to go from country to country and threaten violence for people to use it, as we're seeing right now. If you're paying attention to any financial news, a lot of countries are trying to get away from that. Why? Because they're tired of being threatened. <laughs> and at the end here, what Professor Viro was actually asking for is for exactly what the countries are doing. They're getting away from the threats of violence. They're starting their own. They have been empowered enough to actually go and do things uh, with their own economies of scale. They are way past uh, just throwing sticks at each other and living in grass huts as they have been empowered by uh, nations that were further ahead. But that also comes with a cost. That also comes with a cost. Um, uh, more, well, the cost of more people. More people on the planet. And the demand for the same product. The demand for the same product when, every, when everybody can make the same product and make more of it than what they can actually consume themselves the product becomes less valuable like me and like a lot of content creator creators we are coming to the conclusion of this whole content creator phenomenon the ones that get pushed up are really the top of the top you know whether they use bots or whatever it's another video i was watching and i watch a lot of people um and people are starting to know it's at least people i know watch and noticed for the longest time what elon musk was saying that yes bots are being used bots create fake content viewers because there's not enough people to take in the amount of product productivity you, a content creator will put out there's not enough time in the day there's not enough time for the eyeballs thus maybe i don't know it sounds like from what professor viral says further on is that he has some kind of physical job he does outside of the youtube thing even though he has uh plenty of subs the YouTube um, ecosystem now that has been around forever and has had a lower entry to barrier so that everyone could do it is now become saturated just like uh, what you say lonely fans we'll call it lonely fans for now uh, women get on there and have found out that yeah oh because it sounds great that yeah you don't have to do that much work you just have to have a camera which you probably have on your phone and it's easy to get to the barrier for entry is so easy that unless you're the cream of the crop you're the top of the top 
even the top of the tops, they're not making millions of dollars anymore. It used to be the time where, yes, um, you would find on some content creators' channels, uh, not a few years ago, at least, especially during through the pandemic, that yes, you would find lonely fans models um, making millions of dollars. Of course, more so that going to the people who created uh, the website in the first place. But as we get out here, as we get out to back to the fact that somebody has to pay the bill, somebody has to give that money over. And when people uh, get to the real economy, when the fiat starts to lose its value, the money you're you're giving over is losing value. You try to keep more of that. Most people will try to keep more of that. So you go from a, uh, or a subscription model of OnlyFans and you compare that to what you would think is more efficient is a uh, viewer model where it's pay-per-views and the advertisers, uh, when they get more eyes, um, they get they get the shell out more money because they get more money for the conversion rates. But the conversion rates are not there because people still don't have more money. So <laughs> to actually give out to actually these advertisers so they can keep advertising and giving money to the content creators. What we're really having is a complex supply and demand basic economic problem. <laughs> And the collapse of the large banks. Well, not the large banks. The large banks will be fine. They're well, not even a collapse of. They're collapse of small banks, but a condensation into a few large banks to have a one world currency. And it's only going to get worse from here. It's only going to get worse from here. And like um, this fictional character in Professor Viral's video here the Karibo or whatever the fuzzy cat thing <laughs> I forgot what it's called I didn't watch Mondoka Magica but the, from what I understand there's this fuzzy cat thing we're all going to become like that we're all going to work on a step where one of us dying doesn't matter we all um, have the same amount of knowledge as the other one and the individuality varies just so slightly that it doesn't matter if another person is there or not it doesn't matter what content you're creating it doesn't matter <laughs> and i want to say i hope that's not what happens because once again humans are not perfect and they can't remember everything and everybody has and because of that because there's only so much uh limited information that can be held into a human's brain we can't exactly have the same experiences meaning that just by that alone we can't be the same <laughs> And that's what's really what uh, separates people from other people is their experiences, and they come share that as content sometimes. But at some point, when you can share your content with uh, thousands of people, they now somewhat have that experience through you. So it's a complex problem, and there's no short answer, and there's no quick way of fixing it. <laughs> so I just seen from what this guy was saying that from what, what he's expressing at the end that he is mad he's angry he's in some kind of turmoil I call it and I'm seeing it everywhere I'm seeing it everywhere regardless of where it's just got this guy is it's just barely hitting a content creator with a lot of subs and it's going to spread all the way to the top, eventually knocking off the smaller channels here and there. And I, I wish him the best. Like I said, I wish him the best. Um, and I wish him more eyes. Well, more eyes that have deeper pockets. <laughs> they haven't spent all their money at Lonely Fans. I'm going to let him go ahead and finish this. And I said I would make a response video to this. So here I am. But it's just a rough ideal of what I think... It's happening. Like I said, there's no real solution to this other than we just have to let it play out. We just have to let it play out and hope for the best. Um, and I don't know. Maybe the banks will fold. Maybe we'll go to a new system of value. But that's really just asking for a new slave owner. <laughs> because uh, the banks still own people when they own your means of transferring your energy 
to someone else. We really, we could go back to the bartering system that gets rid of the middleman, but that makes things harder. But we've been avoiding the hard things since we've created the, I guess the sleep, the steam engine for quite some time now. Very few people bicycle, even though these globalists want that to be the 15 minute city solution to everything, bicycle and electric cars. Most people don't bicycle, although it is gaining traction considering the gas prices and how much it is to own a car, insurance, and everything else because you can't afford it. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. We will receive. We will we'll see a return to a simpler living like that, where you want to get out of the city, get on a horse, and you go take your chances, <laughs> horse and buggy, and go take your chances, and we work our ways back up from there it'd be interesting to see in the future a cowboy <laughs> with his two horse carriage and a cell phone <laughs> i'm gonna leave it there let him finish out his this video and we'll see what happens going forward i have a mission we cannot forget that in spades work and you'll be rewarded with the ideal picturesque little life especially if you do it hard enough but does that include an explanation of the brain fog from being on the clock for well over eight hours and being unable to appreciate anything? Does that include the costs you have to pay to get that job to begin with? A clothes, car, internet, a home address, a phone number, everything that goes along with maintaining those things? Does it include the body that's supposed to be living that perfect little life deteriorating? If it sounds like I'm angry, it's because I am. I'm just over halfway through my twenties, so why can't I climb stairs normally some days because my fucking knees feel like they're degrading? I can't relax because all the jobs for the degree I was told would be promising are both awful, full of hateful people, and so far away that when you consider commuting and preparation, I have just under five and a half hours of time for myself each day without even accounting for chores, meals, and other responsibilities yet, which are themselves just an act of maintenance to be able to hold a job and keep producing for someone else's gain. You are not paid money for food and shelters that you can live. You are paid money for food and shelters that you can keep producing. If you're mad at Hubei in this story's context, but not mad at, ain't terrified for our own world, then you should probably consider why. Does the reason come down to something like, that's just how it is? Do you argue for any of the flawed arguments represented here that could be used to reason for the death of our own species, but think it's okay because for right now, your group of human is the advanced one? Let me tell you, when a system is built on always crushing someone, eventually it works its way up. No one is safe. We are incubators not even trying to solve the eventual guaranteed death. And that's that. I won't end this on some hopeful note because hope betrays the anger that was required for action. This should leave you sad and angry. Those negative emotions we feel and are justified in feeling should drive us forward. So get angry. Get mad. Break the contract if it's not fair. It would be much too ironic to end this video on a note about making money, so I'll leave my patrons' names off of this one and work out some kind of solution with them in exchange over there privately. But thank you for your time as always. I hope I'll see you again soon.